How to manage data and model versions. How do you manage your code, machine learning models, and your data so you can recreate them in the future, especially when the government or someone else wants to know how your model came up with its answers? To do that, you'll have to first track versions. And it's a little more complicated than managing typical software versions. First, the basics. Let's talk about software. When software is created and released to the customer, you do want to be able to maintain different versions of it because we expect to continue to enhance the software. A new version of the software may contain enhanced features and bug fixes from previous versions. Each version of the software takes on a specific number. On the main trunk, you will have versions that may start from 0.0, .0 and go through 1.0, 2.0, etc., 8.0, 9.0, and so on. A version that goes into production is shown in red here, and it's called the release version. Not all versions become release versions. When there is a bug fix or an enhancement to be made on a particular version that's already in production, then we make a branch like 8.1. This continues on its own version numbering like 8.2, 8.3 and so on. You might also have bug fixes on 8.2, in which case you create 8.2.1 and 8.2.2, etc. Finally, all the 8.x versions would uh, typically be merged back into the main 9.0 version and perhaps a later version. There are many tools to manage such version control and one of the most common ones is GitHub. Such tools are great for text files like what software code is. If we need to recreate the performance of a previous version of a machine learning system, then we definitely need to store data and the models as well. This is even more critical for regulated industries like healthcare and insurance. So how do we do this? Along with the code, we may have to manage versions of the data that was used to train, validate, and test these models along with the machine learning models themselves. Data can be in many formats, such as binary, and is much bigger in volume, running into gigabytes or even terabytes or even petabytes, depending on the models being trained. So normal version control tools don't work. What you need is a data version control mechanism. For this, dvc.org is a good starting point. Version control is needed for models as well. If the model versions are XML based, then we could use either GitHub or DVC or other appropriate tools. We link the software with the data version and the model version as shown with blue boxes. So we know which corresponds to which. This is usually done through a metadata file that keeps track of the location of the data and the models. This metadata file is usually small and is text-based. When you pull down a certain version of the code from GitHub, you can also pull down the corresponding versions of the data and the model. When you're working with a particular version of the model, you might experiment with different hyperparameters for that model. As you experiment, you want to keep track of which ones did the best so you can go back in time and perhaps pick one from an earlier experiment to use in your production model. That's why we need version control mechanisms for models as well. I help organizations on their digital transformation journey and building out their AI capabilities from concept to implementation. If you need consultation help in this area, please reach out to me and also subscribe to my mailing list. Thanks for watching.